At the age of 17, I started using a tanning bed. I had purchased a white prom dress. At that point in time, for me to look pretty on prom night was to be tan in that white prom dress. Well, there's a girl in the sun in my California dream. Red lips, whole blonde hair, her blue eyes that undress me. Oh, she's the one, oh, she's the sun. She's everything I got could need. But she's the type of girl that you always see. One particular friend called me up just three days ago. And, and I asked, oh, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm on my way to tanning. I stopped dead in my track. I, I said to her, I said, it doesn't matter what I said to her, but I said, are you crazy? She said about my self-esteem. And I turned around, I said to her, you want to see self-esteem? I said, next time you come over, I'm going to pull down my pants and I'm going to show you how do you think this will affect your self-esteem. People are still out there on the beaches, you know, spending hours a day exposing themselves to really harmful ultraviolet radiation just for the sake of looking you know, healthy and tan, which as we know now, there's no such thing as a healthy tan. You know, if you see somebody that you care about with a uh, sunburn, you say, let me just tell you, I had one of those. I think it caused a brain tumor. Well, obviously it's important to me because of my diagnosis. Being diagnosed with something, with something like melanoma is hard to take because a lot of people don't know what it is or what it's all about or how we get it. And melanoma is a cancer of the pigment cells or melanocytes. These are the cells that make the tan these are the cells that make your moles, and these are the cells that make your freckles. Now, it is a form of skin cancer, and there are different types of skin cancer. It's largely grouped into melanoma versus non-melanoma skin cancers, such as the more common basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. The reason melanoma is separated out from those is that it has a much riskier behavior. Uh, melanoma has a higher tendency to spread inside, and has potentially a much larger um, lethal risk. So because of those behavioral differences between the cancers, um, the dermatologists and the physicians have separated basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma away from melanoma. Uh, but squamous cell and basal cell are formed just like melanoma by the sun. They're also genetic, so sometimes if you have a family history of it, you can get it. Uh, but the difference with those is that instead of actually evading to your organs, they invade your tissue. They basically kill your skin. Uh, so a lot of times with basal or squamous cell, you actually end up getting a lot more skin removed. Uh, than you would with melanoma. Now, melanoma comes in four different stages, one through four. I was diagnosed with stage two, borderline stage three, which means I basically missed the boat on having to go through any chemotherapy or radiation, uh, but still had to go through a lot of surgeries. I think early intervention is the key to um, better treatment for melanoma. Um, it is a disease that for the most part develops on the skin in plain sight. It develops as a changing mole and um, the detection of a changing mole does not require a lot of uh, technical devices. It's something you can see with your own eyes and we know that if melanoma is detected early and removed it is curable in most cases. There's several messages, fundamental messages about melanoma. One, it has the reputation for being an incredibly, incredibly lethal and malignant disease when in fact over 80% of them are cured with surgery. So there is reason to be optimistic about melanoma and it is unfortunate that many of my patients still see it as a death sentence when most of them will do fine. It is important to stress though that early detection is critical for the best survival. So uh, it is imperative for one to learn about surveillance for moles. What are the atypical moles? When to call a physician? And uh, when it's important to have it removed for pathological evaluation? So early detection is a critical component to improving the survival from melanoma. We always tell people to look for the A, B, C, D, E's uh, of a mole. The first is asymmetry. We want to make sure that no matter which side you cut a mole 
in any direction, it should be symmetrical on both sides. B is border. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a clean, concise border and there's no irregularity around that, no jagged edges or uh, shading differences. C is color. So you want to make sure that there's a uniform color throughout the entire mole and there's no variation in color from one side to the other. D is diameter. We always say that you want it less or equal to the size of a pencil eraser. But the strong point that I want to make there is melanoma comes in all different sizes. So it's not to say that because it's the size of a pencil eraser or smaller, it's something that we don't worry about uh, because I've had moles that have been removed that have been atypical, that have been much smaller than a pencil eraser, uh, but because they're so dark and so concentrated, that's why they became atypical. Mm -hmm. uh, e, which they've actually just added in the last uh, 10 years, is evolution. And we're really finding now that moles that change over time, that become larger or become darker or change in color or border, or anything like that, uh, or something to be concerned with. But for me, I feel that it's really, again, it's my responsibility. It makes my life so much more meaningful, um, and it makes every day much more purposeful to find a way to help and stay involved. I, I deal with, with the, the stresses of having cancer by always reading and talking to people. That's so beneficial. I go to a support group with some wonderful, wonderful people who have really helped me a lot with their insight and their experiences. You realize that People were just like me not that long ago, where melanoma was skin cancer. It was an episode on Seinfeld, where what's a dermatologist going to do? Um, it is a very dangerous form of cancer. So the name of the game is that this has to reach a level where people understand how important it is, and that uh, they have to keep their kids out of the sun. They have to uh, be vigilant themselves, uh, that vanity uh, is something that uh, you know, doesn't replace health, uh, but most of all, to understand that all of uh, you know all cancer is the same and it it really demands the same type uh, of focus you never do your touchdown dance with melanoma there are other cancers that more than others um, if you pass a certain benchmark if you survive one or two or five years you can have pretty good assurance from the medical community that you won't see a recurrence in your lifetime but that doesn't work with melanoma. You know, there have been recurrences known to have happened even 20 years out from this disease. Not as common, but they do happen. And I think that's always important to keep in mind. It, for me, it's always something that's in the forefront of my mind because it reminds me that I can't afford to waste a day and I can't afford to think or assume that I'm in the clear now that I'm five years out and that I know that anything can happen again tomorrow and every moment is important and it's my job to be sure that I use the time that I have here to help others, to keep others from having to deal with this disease in the first place, but also to help others who are going through it.